The Echo Chamber, brought to you by The Homes Report and produced by the international broadcast specialist, Marketeers. The Echo Chamber is brought to you by Weber Shandwick. Our team of analysts, creatives, technologists and strategists bring clarity to the complex in a prove-it-works world with global scale and local insight. Weber Shandwick, we solve. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Echo Chamber podcast. This is Arun Sudharman, and I'm joined today by Weber Shandwick Global President, Gail Hyman. Gail, how are you? I'm fantastic, Arun. How are you? I'm good. I'm back from Cannes. I saw you in Cannes. You were um, lighting up the Quasette, I think, uh, with your, <laughs> your, your news, your views. We've already published a couple of stories, I think, in which you're, you're quoted, extensively quoted, I feel. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, th- thank, thank you for that. Yes, one always, one always tries to light up the uh, La Croisette, and it's, it's difficult because there's a lot of bright light on La Croisette, let's face it. There is, yeah, even in the middle of the night, there's, um, there's a lot <laughs> especially of bright light. At four, especially at 4 a.m. One, one, tries to, one tries to avoid that particular scene, though. Yes, one does. One, one has learned the hard way. Yeah, um, yes. That's Maybe a, one's, first, one's first year, 4 a.m. looks appealing, but mm, yeah. if you're still doing it on your third year, there's a problem. Ooh, that's, you're, you've got a, a, you set a high bar, third year. I do, I do, I, yeah, three years, three okay, years. Okay, three years, and if you haven't learned by then. Yeah, you know, exactly. I, I know people who haven't learned, and they're in kind of year seven, eight, nine. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Yeah, so anyway, that's a good place to start, because... Obviously, we're we're both um, back from Cannes, and I wanted to start this off by asking you what your your highlights and and maybe even your lowlights from from last week were. Well, it's a good question. You know, overall, and um, we were just talking about those who had never been to Cannes and those who've been to Cannes multiple times. I'm one of those fortunate to have been many many times, served on many juries, had many experiences, and it is always awesome. But I felt that this year was a little bit more of a Sata Bache can. Um, it was, it felt a little quieter, a few fewer people. Um, yeah. And even, and I don't know, even the stories coming out of Cannes, there's not a singular compelling gripping story. It feels like there's a lot of pieces of, yeah. of, of stories that, and some that don't feel particularly fresh as it relates to can so a lot of focus on purpose for sure but that's been a can story for as long as i've been going um Mm -hmm. to can for sure um some of the there was there's extraordinary work and i think there's always extraordinary work but i but it felt like nothing truly punched out and in the way that fearless girl did um several Mm -hmm. years ago or or in the way like a girl did um Mm -hmm. before that um I, I just felt it was a, it was a little quieter. That said, um, what was, I, I did like, I mean, I, I did like the disables work, um, out of McCann Israel. And I felt like that made a bold, that made a bold statement. And for me, that was a little bit of a highlight. I think it did. And, and others have covered, you know, covered the, uh, the stories around access and focus on that. And it, it was lovely. I mean, it was, it's mm. totally lovely work and it's, um, it, it threads purpose with technology in a way that I think is, is, is awesome. So I like, I like seeing mm-hmm. that. Um, the PR category, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure you want to get into that, Arun. I won't, I won't, mm-hmm. I won't it's your moment, but that's, uh, um, as you and I have discussed before, you know, that great, great work, always great work, um, showed off what we do as an industry. I guess the question is, did it push the envelope of what we do as an industry? Mm. Yeah. Was- yeah, it seems to me that you could probably make that claim about many categories this year. And I think that sort of speaks to your overall point that this was not a year where there was one campaign that stood out um, or even one theme that really stood out. And certainly on the latter point, I thought, Cannes was maybe better for it because I always feel like when one theme comes out of Cannes, everyone is sort of 
scrambling to jump on a bandwagon. Yeah. Um, I was surprised, let's say, that there wasn't a campaign that sort of swept the board. But again, that's not, a, that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Because you sometimes feel like the juries are almost like a set of dominoes that are falling. Um, and yeah. Once once one goes, you know, it's like the Cold War. They all go. Um, and, 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 and I think that's I think that's right. I think you look at years past and, and um, other campaigns where I think can react to that, aka the Dumb Ways to Die year, right? And, mm. and off the work, no no criticism of the work, but it's certainly one across so many categories. I think can change the rules. Um, um, I, I don't know, but you know, I don't have inside information to know that it was a direct result of that, but I know that that. Um, you're right. It does feel like, you know, you jury after jury after jury and, and you're awarding the same piece of work. So that that, too, isn't perfect. So I, I agree with you that there's something to be said for um, spreading it out. And you feel like it has come out of a legitimate jury process and and, mm. um, and juries necessarily being influenced by what they see sweeping up golds or Grand Prix and, you know, two nights before. Mm. But uh, uh, but again, you're. This work, it just felt, I think there was an expectation, as everyone has reported, right, that um, that the Nike work um, would take everything and would be that kind of story this year. And that didn't happen, um, though it did certainly, and be, again, beautiful work did its share of, did win its share for sure. Um, but I think everyone went in with that expectation and that, that, that did not, um, that didn't happen just the, the way it was uh, forecast. It didn't. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the PR industry. Um, yeah. you're, you're quoted today in the Holmes mm. report uh, as saying, "I was excited about the work in the PR, PR category, but I was not excited about the craft objective the jury set." So you're referring to um, the PR lines jury this year, who tried to, I think, reframe the definition of PR as being. Um, a craft rather than a channel. I think we would all agree that PR is not a channel, but why Why was the, the designation as, as craft? Did that feel unsatisfactory to you? Yeah, I, I you know, and I, I listen, I uh, great respect for Michelle Hutton and, and mm. members of the jury, and I think they did a, a terrific job and, and, and recognized extraordinary work. That said, and, and when one is in, in a jury, you know, the best practice is you step in and you say, here's the three things, here's the three things we're looking for in the work, mm. right? right. Um, and 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 that's and that's important. It's always important to have very real specificity so that the jury can understand and pick pick the work that that um, that is true to those three things. Um, and she did mention she mentioned it I, I know a few times in the context uh, of Can and in the awards presentation talking about how this jury settled on the fact we're not a channel we're about craft. And I hear craft and I have great respect for craft, but craft is for me, making stuff, right? And we make a lot of stuff, but here we are, and I, not to speak about Weber Shanwick, but Weber Shanwick evolved to this position of we solve because we are we find that to deliver for our clients, we must have capabilities to solve bigger and bigger and more complex problems. And craft is a piece of it, um, but the uh, ability to do deliver deliver the data that fuels and delivers the insights that creates the strategy that ultimately allows you to craft a product um, that makes a difference, has an impact. Um, I, I just think it's more than craft. I think craft is a piece of it. Mm, um, and, that, that was, that, and, and it's an important piece of it. And we honored work um, that where the craft was I impeccable. But I, I worry that it's a piece of where our industry is going and I I, I, I I feel like it's incumbent upon us as an industry to recognize the complexity of the world we're in and to be able to, to solve for that with mm. craft and yeah it's an interesting point and and you know I'd say the same thing I, I have a huge amount of time for for Michelle Hutton and indeed um, the the other members of this year's PR Lions jury I, j I wonder if to look at it another way, do you think maybe it's a good thing to limit the definition of PR for the purposes of these awards? Because one thing we have sort of maybe learned, I don't know if this is perhaps a little provocative, but maybe one thing we've learned is that it's very hard to really recognize the full complexity of public relations work at Cannes, and that if we're going to do it, maybe we should just 
limit it to what is part of it, which, which in this case is craft? Listen, I think you could argue as a strategist, that's a strategy for can. Go in, own a piece of it, um, and be very specific and let the industry at large recognize the piece and the mastery of that piece. Um, you could also argue that our you know, competitors in the marketing services slash marketing solutions arena are going in and saying, you know, for our campaign, be it in, in direct, be it in outdoor, um, whatever the category, for our campaign to truly excel or exceed, it's got to drive conversation. It's got to be woven through culture. And that's all the stuff that is part of us. That's buried within our craft. So I feel like for us to go there and not recognize um, that others there have no compunction about bleeding across their swim lane and owning owning mm. what has been historically um, what we've owned, I, I just feel like strategically to just say, let's content ourselves with a piece because everyone will get it and mm. we can win. I, 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 I just feel like that is um, perhaps that holds back the future mm. of our industry. That's, that's my point of view. Yeah, I think that's... A, and that's we, a, you know, we talk about it, right? Should, you know, the, the PR, the entries in the PR category were down this year and um, one can surmise, I don't know, I don't have the data, but one can surmise that's because PR agencies entered in all kinds of categories, right? You spread, you spread it out and because we're doing that kind of work and because we want yeah. that kind of recognition. So, yeah. so that's sort of where I... Uh, I stand on that. Yeah, I think that that's a really fair argument. And to that point, um, it must have been noticeable to you how the, let's say, the advertising industry has has kind of is, is starting to colonize, you know, so-called public relations areas, perhaps like like trusts, like purpose, like brand activism. Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. You know, I was I, I think I may have mentioned I, I walked past uh, a yacht may have been an ad tech yacht which had the words uh trust creativity and empathy on the side um and you know i, I find it interesting that there is this sort of move towards what are issues where presumably public relations consultants like yourself um should be the ones i guess kind of leading this kind of consultancy yeah, I mean, and it's more than we should be leading. I think we have years of credibility in the mm. space. Um, and the, the credibility comes from truly, quote unquote, earning, right, whatever measure of, uh, of attention and conversation and dialogue and understanding. Uh, and earning is very different from the West, what the rest of our industry has historically been doing. And again, not to be dismissive of what they've been doing, it's been important and it's had impact and it's built brands and corporations and um, all, all of those things. But to then step back um, and use trust or creativity, I mean, trust, trust and empathy particularly, it is not um, a natural element of 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 what's been going on in some of the other disciplines, but one understands in an, in a in a society which in which trust um, you know, trust in civil servants, trust in business, all of those things may be waning. Um, for sure, you know, again, strategically trying to find a space in that conversation, but how to do so credibly for um, for those players, I think is is a question and probably a conundrum for those guys. I think we as an industry have to um, and do come by that more credibly as a result of the work we've been doing um, with the C-suite and with CCOs for many, many, many years. And, and, and certainly the research and the studies and the, and the understanding and the deep expertise um, and the kind of talent that we bring to our business that simply doesn't exist, um, in, at least today, um, in some of the other disciplines. Yeah, it, it sort of comes back to that, what I feel is, is maybe the the age-old quandary for the public relations industry in Cannes, which is that if you have all, you know, all these CMOs um, and they're very focused on Cannes and you can see that they're probably going to make decisions based on discussions in, at Cannes and themes that emerge from Cannes, then there, there's certainly a risk if, um, you know, they're buying 
into purpose, ideas, solutions, and thinking about trust that's being presented by, you know, perhaps ad agencies and so on, whose uh, understanding of those areas and certainly experience in those areas is is not as deep as the PR industry. I mean, is that something that still concerns you? Yeah, I think I, for sure it, it con- concerns me, but I, I do think there is um, a level of consciousness, certainly among many CMOs, and I think um, Unilever, I think Joke talked a little bit about it or certainly has been quoted about it in terms of woke washing um, yes, and in indeed. terms of delivery. Yeah, and, and, and delivering real purpose and the need to imbue a brand with real purpose. And that's um, and that, I, I think, is what we are going to not only public relations, but the rest of the marketing world. We're going to need to hold ourselves to a standard of that. And it's very clear that it cannot just be about talking about it and it cannot be about ancillary support of various philanthropies or whatever. If one wants to imbue a brand or a, or a, a, a corporate entity with purpose, it's got to live it. It's got to walk the walk. It's you know how it invests. It's who's on the board. Um, it's who's in the C-suite. Um, and and it is it it is obviously how how the brand is shaped, what the data, how what the what shapes the data that is used to determine the um, you know where the brand goes, how what the brand does, all of those things. Uh, so it's got to be a massive holistic effort to get to a brand that truly has purpose within its uh, brand or an organization that truly has purpose within its DNA. I think we're uniquely positioned to do that. I think we. Um, we look at every layer of an organization, an institution, and a brand, and 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 work that. I think that's what we do historically. Um, I think we got to seize the opportunity for sure. Um, yeah, and it's interesting. You mentioned obviously Alan Jope and his. I think if if anything emerged from last week as the the biggest story, it was probably his um, his new coinage of the phrase woke washing. Um, and in particular, he said that Unilever does not want to work with agencies or creatives that have a track record of working for companies and brands that badge and woke wash, which, you know, on the one hand, I think is, is a perfectly reasonable um, position to take. Do you think it's going to be hard for Unilever to accomplish that? And do you think it's going to be hard for agencies to accomplish that? Um. I guess my answer would be I, one. I, I certainly appreciate. I get I, he his statement gets to um, what's sort of rattling in my head, which is we've got we've got to look deep into the crevices of everything we do, who who we partner with, where we invest, all of those things, right? And I think that's his point. Um, do I think it's going to be hard? My answer would be no. I think consciousness has been raised in the industry. There are certainly many many players. Um, who would not and could not engage in woke washing. So I don't think, I don't think it will be difficult um, for him. And from an agency point of view, not, not difficult, but it, one has to be vigilant, I think. One has to be vigilant. One has to, you know, all of us who have um, values and a mission, we have, we have to stick to that. And, and does one, uh, does one get, asked to do other things or think about things differently perhaps but we have Mm. to stick to uh, we have to we have to stick to the to the values that we establish for our organizations i think that's i think that's just incredibly important for the next uh, you know for the for the future yeah and i mean presumably this isn't um a wake-up call if you if you'll excuse the pun this is not a wake-up call for um for you right at weber shandwick i assume you've already kind of been focused on this across the global network. It must, I mean, it's not an easy thing for an agency of your size, but I am. No, we are massively, yeah, and I think, yeah, yeah, we are massively focused on it. I I think um, we do have values to which we adhere. We do, um, as all of us in the industry, get asked about all kinds of things in a very complicated world. Um, we are incredibly careful about uh, where we go and and and, and what we do, um, mm. and very thoughtful about. It. And I, I I think all of, you know within our industry, um, certainly our, our our competitors have the have the same have the same feeling. It's it's a it's a complicated world, as you know. Yeah, and it's it's a complicated test as well. I would think because 
it's not a binary issue, right? No. Uh, is this badging, is this work washing, or is it not? Is it actually improving on some level um, the behavior of a company? Um, um, so there's a lot of shades of gray in there. Yeah, no, and it's interesting, and I, I think we've talked about it before. I feel like when, I think it was in um, 2018 when Larry Fink wrote his letter, um, Black Rock write about purpose and, and talked mm. about, you know, without yeah. purpose, no organization will succeed, which was, I think, a massive clarion call, right, for business yes. writ large. Um, yeah. And for our industry, too. And, and and the message was, it's not it's not about the patina, right? It's, it's not about the gloss that you're applying to any brand, and that's sort of you know, Mad Men era, that's historically what, what we saw. I mean, it, it is simply not that anymore. And that, I, I don't know that that was so much of a, of a uh, wake up call, woke up call, but to your point, but I, but I, but I do think, um, I do think it got a lot of people to think differently um, mm. about, about how they're approaching, how they're approaching marketing. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's the serious stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go on. Let's go on to the more comedic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, although people listening expecting any laughs, um, maybe lower your expectations yeah, that's right. lower at the this point. Okay. So, I mean, people always want to know what really happened, I feel, on the closet. You know, they, they're, all, they're interested in the issues up to a point, but um, did you feel like this was a more low-key can, that there was less partying and less helicopters to Saint-Tropez? And, I must confess, one of the great quotes I heard um, was at uh, the Carlton Hotel where someone said, have you done the helicopter both ways? <laughs> um, I, I felt it was a little more low key. Now, to be honest, did I talk to an individual or two that had choppered to Monaco? Yes. Um, and I think the minute you use chopper as a verb, it puts you in a pantheon that's a little different. Um, <laughs> So, I'm not sure pantheon is necessarily the word I'd use, but yes. <laughs> yes, it's true. I mean, I think the individuals in question, perhaps pantheon might be the word they, they would use, but, but mm. um, yeah, the cadre of, of those who chopper is, um, it's, it's different, it's different. So yeah, there was some of that. Um, there was some, certainly parties on boats that uh, were docked. I think there were a few that went out that I heard about. I must say, I... I did not go out um, on one this year. I, and, and you know, in full disclosure, I have in the past, but I, I feel there was less, less of it. I, I think, in generally speaking, there is a move to, um, you know, less, less, less glam um, associated with, with, with can for sure. But you know, there is still. It, it still happens. I mean, it's still lovely to go to Eden Rock and, you know, have a, have a colossally expensive glass of, of whatever it is and, mm. and savor the view. It's nice, though. Um, I did not have time to do that this year, but I, I, think, I think others did. But, I, mm -hmm. again, I think it was it, – I, I don't want to say the tone was somber, but I, it was just no. a little bit uh, – it was a little bit lower key. Um, but I think, again, as I said earlier, in the first few years, I remember, I think it was my second year there, I was walking down La Quazette at 3 a.m. and I thought, oh my God, I can't wear these shoes anymore. And I took them off and I uh, walked back to my hotel and I got glass in my foot. And that, that actually, that was an inflection point for me. Yeah, for you, <laughs> just for you in your life, I would imagine. In my life, in my life, because, yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's always... You know, people say, "Listen, it's great. It, you know, there's it's wonderful. You see wonderful work. You meet wonderful people. There is a sense of joie de vivre around around the whole thing, and that's nice. But it it mm. it did feel like it was not a boondoggle. There was there was sub, there was a lot of substance I felt in in, in the sessions. I I you know I, I went to a few. I heard good things um, about others. I felt that Can itself has looked to put a little more gravitas on the stage. Um, and uh, versus a full-on celebrity throng, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a good thing. I think that that too tends to uh, change the tone. Yeah, I think so. There was also a something of a paucity of like real A-list celebrities um, compared to previous years, which I think yeah, yeah, I thought 
really yeah. helped. Um, I mean, that, I totally agree that you, you know nothing is worth getting glass in your foot at three yeah. in the morning um, <laughs> and and walking barefoot barefoot. Yeah, that was it. I mean, that's a level of sacrifice I, I wasn't aware yeah. of. I mean, that is. <laughs> Ah, yes, we do what we must, Arun. Um, but um, yeah, that was that, that was a total inflection point for me. Mm -hmm. It actually what it, it meant is I now um, bring alternative footwear with me at all times. So that's uh, it doesn't keep me indoors. It just keeps me in in more sensible footwear. You really bled for the work. <laughs> I mean, literally. We that's we so, must do what we must do. Yeah, you must, I guess. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was it was a little more low key. I felt there was a little less of the spurious um, celebrity stuff. Uh, there were still obviously there's there's still all the you know all the the partying, the endless a lot of endless rounds of receptions. Um, one thing I will say I noticed though, as someone who was up early many mornings, uh, partly down to jet lag and partly because. Um, I enjoy the mornings in Cannes because there are fewer people around. Um, yeah. There were so many exercise options this year. Yeah. Uh, there were running clubs. There was cycling clubs with like good road bikes. There was Soul Cycle. There was a whole Soul Cycle class you could take. And those are just the things I saw. I'm sure there was a lot more, um, which I, th I felt was an encouraging development. Yeah, I know. I think I think it's I think it's good. I think they, you know, perhaps next year we can begin to link um, lions wins with the number of steps taken and or other quantified metrics of mm -hmm. of the, uh, the creative participants. That could be good. Could be a whole new can. Yeah, well, you do hear it a lot. I mean, lots. There's a lot of uh, sort of competitive stepping. You know, people yeah. would be like, "Oh, I've walked eighteen thousand steps today," and then someone else will, will mention how they walked further it's yeah it's 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 a sport yeah, it's a competitive it's, sport in can it, it is because i was doing thirteen thousand and fourteen thousand at my highest moment um mm. so and i i felt to, i felt bad i felt like i should be stepping it up so to speak yeah no but, i mean i was going to say you may need to step that up that's i think i have to step it up which mm. is uh which is a problem but 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 can we link lions um to outsized outsized metrics, outside health, outsized health metrics. Can we prove that those who do the 18,000 steps win more at camp? That's, so. a, you know, yeah, but then you'd also have to look at whether it's, whether it's actually causation or correlation, Gail. So. Uh, you're, you're so right. And this is where data is everything. Yeah, right. Indeed. But you don't want to go by a a that's, a, that's yeah. a problem for you to solve, I would have thought. I think so. It's, it's, it's another problem for us to solve, for sure. Um, one thing I will say that I bet there are lots of grizzled can veterans who are aghast at the rise of all these, these exercise-led initiatives on the Quasette. Um, yeah, I mean, for anyone who felt it was, you know, a forum for rosé consumption, um, yeah, the, uh, the enhanced exercise options is probably kind of a downer. Yeah, uh, okay. So anyway, what would you say your key takeaway was from this year's Can Lines? Hmm, that's a good. It's a good question. I I think that um, overall, I'm just trying to now. I'm I'm really trying to think what my key takeaway was. I I think in all the discussion that has been had by our industry, by the public relations industry, on what is our place, I mm. I feel quite optimistic that our place is growing and enlarging and the kind of, the kind of work that was getting top honors um, throughout can and that was things like the disables and the burger the, the whopper detour and that kind of stuff mm. um, that is work our industry does so magnificently and so well um, and that I just feel like next year and the years to come, we have to put ourselves in a position to take the biggest, to take the biggest trophies home and to uh, mm. continue to push ourselves in the category and push ourselves beyond the category. I mean, all of us, all of us who um, work in creative technology on behalf of our clients and, and many of us do, um, 
see that kind of work going on there and um, that kind of work being championed outside what I would call the traditional PR uh, uh, PR um, competitive set. But we do that work. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled for Golan and, and the um, and the Lion, the gold that, that those guys won for terrific work. But I think we can do more and more of that within the PR category and beyond the PR category. And I think the big winners at CAN, the ones that are getting talked about, prove um, that we can do that because that's the kind of work we're doing. So um, I, I feel it's uh, the the clarion call message to our industries. We're doing that work, and let's put ourselves in a position to win across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and and with I mean with that in mind, the you're talking about the idea creation credit. Is that the one that you think that that the industry should be should be leading should be getting? I, for sure. I mean, I, I mean, I, I at the end of the day, yes, that's we should we should be there. I mean, there's we should be proud of all the times where we're winning um, for PR for sure, and we're doing extraordinary work. And the PR is a huge part of. Um, of the wins at Cannes across the board, simply because the conversation, I mean, it's a virtuous circle to drive the conversation and to do the amplification, um, you know, helps helps to get a jury to recognize that this was a very important piece of work, right? So um, it is massively symbiotic um, with everything else that has gone on to create an award-worthy entry. That mm, said, sure. is, there a, is there a special place um, for those who pull together the data, get to the insight, drive the strategy, bring it all together and own the idea part. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there is, and I, 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 I think we're doing it and I think we got to own it and we got to be up, uh, collecting the trophies more. Did we didn't, we didn't talk about who's collecting the trophies yet. Did we? Or oh gosh. Yes. I've got to ask you about that because that was without a doubt, one of the, the best quotes to come out of can so gail tell us uh why you were unimpressed by the people that came on stage for the pr grand prix well i i just you know and i i know where you're trying to take me in a run and i'll go there with you um (laughs) but i for years it has been remarked and you and i talk there's been a a tumbler, like something like a lot of guys, one girl, and, and just picture after picture of people going up to take get lions on the can stage, and there's a lot of, of men and typically one, maybe two women. Mm. And that that tumbler um, was put up in the year 2013, right? Mm. So that's that's a while ago. Yeah. So one would think with the advent of the glass lion and and um, with all the focus on gender equality and all the focus on on broad issues of diversity and inclusion at can all of which is good and important, one would think mm. that the individuals going up on the stage would reflect um, the change, hopefully the surge of change that's happened in, in, in our industry. And yet, um, sitting there uh, during the awards, it did not feel like that. I mean, I, you know, it, it, group after group went up and looked like that. A lot of guys, one girl, including um, the group that went up to collect the uh, collect the lion um, for the um, for the tampon mm-hmm. uh, case that 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 one in PR. Um, and yes, I I did say that I felt that perhaps we needed fewer awards about menstruation and more menstruators on the stage, but but. Um, I said something like that, and it was an observation um, that a colleague had had the day before as well. So we're, we're, you know, it was just, it was a, it was a little bit of a stunner for us. Yeah, it, it, it was for me too. It's almost like there was a, maybe a shift in 2016 where I think you saw more visible um, female presence on the stage, and then it yeah. just kind of lapsed back, almost like, okay, yeah, we tried that. For a while and that was nice but but you can't expect us to keep this up for too long <laughs> yeah I, I honestly don't know what it was but it, it just was it was quite it was quite quite glaring against a backdrop um mm. of you know of, of some bona fide change that um the can alliance has made and that our industry has made oh well, so, well that's um that's as good a note as any to end on um so thank you so much your time gail i'm glad you survived another can 
Um, <laughs> no uh, bleeding. No bleeding this time. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, I'm really glad that you, you were not um, marching the croisette barefoot because that... No, no more, no more. But, yeah. but, but thank you, thank you too, Arun. It's always, uh, always a pleasure to talk to you and always a pleasure, of course, to see you um, in camp. All right, excellent. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back soon. You've been listening to The Echo Chamber, brought to you by The Homes Report and produced by the international broadcast specialist Marketeers. Sponsored by Weber Shandwick, our team of analysts, strategists, creatives and technologists bring clarity to the complex in a prove-it-works world with global scale and local insight. Weber Shandwick. We solve. We solve.